you know, I'm going to take this opportunity. I've got both of you in the same virtual room as me, and I cannot let this opportunity pass by. So I'm going to spend some time having a bit of a conversation with you, pick your minds, and, uh, you know, just make sure that all the people who are watching this get a peek into those thoughts of yours. So I'll start with you, Robin. You know, when I spoke to you about this award and told you that Nandan was getting it, you pointed out that there are many parallels and similarities in your journey. What stuck you as the singular most common theme between your journey and Nandan's journey? I, I think it's vision and hard work uh, and, and, and also teamwork and, and an appreciation of human beings, right? And, and so I have many friends in India. I think we have like a common passion. We, we want to make the world a better place. And I, it also so happens that, you know, I, I was fortunate to get an emphasis award back in 2004. I went to um, Moscow to collect it. Uh, and, and so I think we have many parallel lives. If you look at our CVs, we could be blood brothers, you know, in different, different parts of the world. And I think that's the great thing about technology. Te it, to make good technology work, you need global co collaboration of the best people on the planet, right? It's not about vote for me and do this nonsense. It's actually getting things done. So I feel we have many synergies. He has a slight advantage over me and that he's a good few years younger. Uh, but the good news is you get older, you can do more of the things you want to do with more of the people you like. So old age is not a bad thing. Yeah, absolutely. Especially looking at you, Robin, it is definitely not a bad thing. So <laughs> I've never seen anybody as energetic as you. Uh, Nandan, if I may ask, among so many things that you have done in, in, in your life, what do you think is your most significant achievement so far? Uh, you know, I think the thing that I really feel uh, I think was most significant, especially from an engineering point of view, was really the building of the digital ID, Aadha, uh, which has 1.3 billion people on it, which does 50 million transactions a day for authentication and 5 million transactions a day for uh, KYC, because it has been the fundamental transformation of India's digital infrastructure. And I was also struck by Sir Robin's biodata. It sounded eerily familiar to me because there's a story of him taking the tenure that he got from account to a pub and giving them jobs to do, saying you will be the VP of engineering and you will be the VP of marketing and so on. And I also, when I began, I was doing a startup inside the government and I had a, a very, very diverse set of people. Some of them were bureaucrats who had worked in the government for decades. Some of them were technologists who had come back from Silicon Valley. And I had to blend this, poly, this group together and make one team and give them a sense of mission to do something which many, many people told us was impossible. Impossible both in technology, impossible in terms of getting the, making it happen in a society as complex as India. So I think uh, I really like the fact that he took this group of 12 people and created a world-beating platform like Arm. And I feel proud that I had, I had a set of great people and we worked together to change India for the better with very modern digital infrastructure. Yes, thank you for that insight. And I mean, who else but us Indians can, you know, play, play testimony to the fact of what we have built and how we are getting benefited by all that. Let's move on to a different aspect. You know, the world has changed, is changing due to the pandemic. And lots of things in business has changed. I want to ask you a little more personal question. How has it changed you? And this is for both of you. How has the pandemic changed you individually? So whoever wants to go first. Oh, well, well, maybe I'll go first. So in our working lives, one of the jokes I had is that in my working life, I did two long haul flights every month. And I was typically in Silicon Valley or Japan or India or China, most of my working life. Obviously, with this pandemic, um, I've actually spent, I've been married for 51 years. This is the longest period of time I've spent with my wife. And what this has made me realize, and, and, and some people actually, they've actually described this as psychologists. 
there's a feminine side and a masculine side. This isn't a male and female side, but I would say the pandemic has given me time to pause, reflect, and consider really important things like families, children, and so on. And I, I would say that's been a very positive thing for me. Also for me, uh, I, I couldn't fly, but I could walk 10,000 steps every day, right? And see the countryside. So I feel better connected to the human race and nature. And I think probably I'm a little more stable and a little less aggressive. So, so there's been, and particularly for me, I have very small grandchildren. So it's been absolutely delightful to see those grandchildren growing up and learning and so on. So, and, and then the other thing, this is also in a reflective way. If you look at the world and the pace at which it has been moving, you could describe it as a rat race, right? And, and, and again, I don't think the world is in a good shape at the moment. To, to resolve this pandemic, we need the most important collaboration on the planet. And for the moment, politically, that is not happening. However, if we look at the scientists, the engineers, the, the, the vaccine creators, they are doing a, an amazing job in, in, in spite of political leaders. So my own personal view is that this will be a kind of natural correction for us and there will be reflection and there will be a more positive outcome. Uh, that, that, that's my answer. So, and again, I, I, one of the things I say is every problem is an opportunity in disguise and it's important. We have limited time on this planet. We have to look for the opportunity. And, I th and there are some problems as well, by the way. So another factor is, unfortunately, mental health is, is a big challenge. So there are some new challenges. There are some new opportunities. And as human beings, if we can focus on the opportunities and not worry about things we can't influence, we got a better chance. Thanks, oh, I totally concur with Sir Robin. I think, uh, I think one thing also about, I guess, people like him and me is that we are optimists. And we believe the world can be better and we can make a difference. And in every situation, we look for what we can do better from that. And for me also, uh, the pandemic was a, ch a chance to uh, take stock of my priorities, improve my health, get into an exercise mode, uh, lose weight, you know, and uh, focus on my family. I think I spent more time with my family the last two years than the previous 20 years. And I think uh, I also use this time to come to grips with how to use digital technology. In fact, I have a new book out with my colleague Tanuj Bojwani called The Art of Bitfulness, Being Calm in a Digital World. And so how do you make sure that in spite of all this technology around us, we can remain calm and, in, you know, and not feel overwhelmed? So this has been a great experience for me. It's also been a time when I spent a lot of time in the wilderness and the forest. Uh, and uh, seen animals and tigers and so on. So I think while at one level, you know, it is stressful and uh, you don't know what's coming around the corner. At another level, I think this has been a chance to get better. And certainly on the business side, the digital transformation that the pandemic has accelerated is unbelievable. And to be a participant in that transformation and help play a role in helping companies transform globally has been an invaluable experience. Wow, fabulous. All, all sorts of productive work has happened during this period of the pandemic, which is great. I also want to give a shout out to Robin and friends. Uh, so I don't know whether you know Nandan, but Robin is a budding singer. He runs a band and there's lots of songs wow. that he performs. So I, I get glimpses of that once, once in a while and it's kind of gone up during the pandemic. So. Uh, yeah, while this is all great, you know, there is another side of the pandemic. The, the fact that the inequalities in the world has continued to grow. I mean, in 2020 alone, 4.6 crore Indians or 46 million Indians have slipped into abject poverty. Uh, similar stories are coming from around the world. The rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer. I believe that technology is a big leveler and it could help so, to solve some of these problems. I want to ask both of you, how do you think we could use technology to engineer a better world, which is equal for more and more people? Uh, okay. Let me just uh, uh, pitch in first this time, uh, Robin. I think, uh, right. uh, you know, obviously, you know, 
my whole work in the public space has been a, a, a digital for a better world. I mean, making sure everybody had an ID made a difference. Uh, I was also uh, the advisor to NPCI and they came out with the UPI payment platform, which is one of the world's most modern payment platforms that does four and a half billion transactions a month of a value of a hundred billion dollars. And today when I go for a walk and I see a roadside vegetable vendor on a cart taking digital payments using UPI, I feel that we have really built something which has reached the, the common man. Uh, also, a lot of my nonprofit work is in uh, education and uh, my team at XTEP has built a software platform uh, called uh, Sunbird, which is being used across India. And during the pandemic, uh, it was used heavily for training teachers and providing worksheets to kids and so on. But I agree with you. I think the divide, especially the digital divide has only been enhanced because those families who had a device could get access to education and knowledge and those who didn't have devices were cut out. So I think all the more reason that we have to work together to create ubiquitous connectivity, make the devices cheaper and better and put devices in the hands of everybody so that they have access to the best knowledge and best learnings. The other important thing is uh, the work that we're doing in India on health. Uh, the, for example, India has built the COVID system, which is uh, probably the largest uh, vaccination platform where everybody can register and get vaccinated. And I've been involved with a group which built the vaccination certificate for that. And today 1.5 billion people have vaccination certificates issued, which are completely uh, digital encrypted, uh, you know, they can't be fraud and you can verify using a QR code. And this certificate is now being used in five countries. So I think, you know, my view is that I have a bias for action. So the idea is that wherever you see a gap, wherever you see an opportunity, you go in and work on things that benefit a large number of people. Over to you, Sir Robin. Thank you. Um, so my own life, one of the things that I've really thought about through this pandemic is mental health. You probably know a lot of engineers are frightened to come out of their rooms and there's a lot of fear in the world. I'm very fortunate to be a visiting professor at the University of Liverpool and I've got involved in a completely new space. I've started talking to medical people and what I'm actually gonna do, we're gonna create a chair of mental health. So if you think about all the problems of the world and human beings behaving really stupidly, mental health is a big issue. So and a, a project that I'm particularly interested in, again, with your application on your iPhone, you might be a raging schizophrenic, but if you have a device on your phone to control your illness, so the person is in charge of it, it can make a huge difference. Another factor that is happening, we have data in the police force, we have da data in the health service. If we can use this data more wisely, and again, give the power to the person, as opposed to the big corporations, imagine the power that can release. So, this is probably my most exciting project. It, it's really good for me because I don't know anything about psychology. And th this is also where the music come in. I've actually written a song, uh, which is called Whoever Has a Friend. And the basic idea was, imagine you're a lonely person and you don't have anybody who cares. It, but imagine you find one friend who does care. And music, by the way, is a great cure. So personally, uh, I've... I've probably because of this pandemic, I've gone into a space and on a project that I never thought would happen. In the meantime, of course, all my startups are doing their stuff, but it's like, if you think about this logically, we're talking about climate change. If you look at the blah, blah, blah at the conferences, are we really gonna fix this? But imagine if we can enable uh, people to connect better, talk more, more properly, this, this again goes back to the mental health thing. If we can enable all the people on the planet to get real and to fix some problem. Just think what that opportunity can do. Again, I happen to know some people who've been involved in vaccine development. Within Cambridge University, because of the pandemic, they threw several departments together to get the job done, all done within a few months, which would normally have taken them 10 or 20 years. So there's a lot of good things happening. And the only thing I think which is a problem for our politicians, problem with politics, most constitutions were written a few hundred years ago. We need to find a way to rejuvenate our political systems to get effective. You, you might have a better idea how to do that than I do, but clearly the world needs to come together. And if we can fix the health, communicate, 
then we should be able to solve climate change too. And it's so inspiring to listen to uh, your what you are doing and what you're planning to do and how you're using technology to make a huge change in the world. As the IIT says, the mission of the IIT is to engineer a better world. I think both of you are truly doing it. And uh, congratulations once more to you, Nandan. And thank, thank you. you, Sir Robin, for agreeing to give away this award. It's, it the, was so wonderful speaking the, to the, you. There's one other thing I just want to mention. You probably know one of my hobbies is bird watching. And when I come to India, which has got the most diverse range of birds in the world, I just love forgetting everything, going out in the countryside and chill and relax. That's the other thing for all the people under this stress. Nandan and I are very fortunate that we can relax. And I just yeah. say to anybody who's watching this, don't worry, it'll be okay. If you can find a bit of, uh, it, it, you know, if we can do this, there's no problem for you guys. So all the best. Yeah. Thank and you, so Robin, I, I look forward to seeing you in Bangalore. And as somebody said today in the FT, Bird watching is better than binge watching. So, <laughs> so let's let's catch up and thank you. Thanks again for the award, Sanya, and I'm really honored to have this very special award. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you, Sir Robin. I'll see you sometime. Bye bye. Bye bye.